Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I have a YouTube channel with my daughter, and we talk all about language learning for children. Today, I was sitting here in an organic restaurant, and I just thought about some meta learning. So I thought, why not make a video called 10 Meta Hacks for Your Kids Language Learning? So we're going to talk about that, but maybe first it would be appropriate to tell a little bit about what meta learning is. So for example, in this restaurant, they serve organic food. So what do you need to make organic food? Well, you need a frying pan, you need all sorts of tools and utensils and specifically for this restaurant, they would need a, an organic farm, right? So it's the same thing with learning that before we even start learning, you have to do certain things in order to make your strategy. So that's what we're going to look at today. What can we do before we even start learning? Number one, and yeah, uh, I was also thinking about some thumbnail text here. And if you think it's a little bit strange, I'm going to explain it more in tip number 10. Uh, but number one is embracing your mistakes, or we got to teach our children to embrace their mistakes, right? Um, so when I used to teach language or languages, uh, I would tell my students that Okay, imagine that you have 10,000 mistakes that you need to get out of the system. So what is the best way to do? Just do as many mistakes as you can. And it's not only that we should tell our children that they it's okay to make mistakes. It's basically also that you have to make mistakes. How do we learn? We make mistakes, right? So that's so important. And it goes for anything. It's not only for language learning. Um, so imagine a rich person. They have $300 million in their account. And if they earn this money for themselves, they didn't just wake up you know, one day and have a brilliant idea, and then they just made that money. They made 100 mistakes before they even got to that point, right? So the second one is to set a long-term and a short-term goal. And for the long-term goal, it should probably be what, why they want to learn that language in the first place. Why do you want to learn Chinese? Yeah, because I want to travel to China and do business. Why do you want to learn Spanish? <laughs> for a child, maybe not travel to China and do business, but you get my point. For a child, maybe, why do you want to learn Spanish? because I think it's a cool language. I, uh, you know, I like Spanish songs and they inspire me. Or I want to go to Spain and talk to Spanish people. So that will be the long-term goal. Short-term goals can be something you help set for your child. And that's the secret help set, not set for them, but let them help themselves uh, to set short-term goals in order to inspire themselves, right? The short-term goal could be just something to boost their confidence, something like learning or being able to have a very short conversation or learning a few phrases or something like that. And then celebrate the achievement of those little goals. Uh, so number three, how important it is to learn in context. And this has sort of like two levels. So let's look at that macro perspective. Uh, it's better to learn, let's say if you wanted to learn a foreign language, like, okay, I'm in Thailand. And if you wanted to learn Thai, maybe learn in Thai markets. Is that the better way? Or is it to read about Thai linguistics in a book? Obviously, the larger context is to learn in the market. It's the natural way, right? So try to find a natural context for your child to learn as much as possible. And even more so for children because they are not so theoretically, uh, they're not 
really learning by theory like we adults do. But also the smaller picture here, learning context, uh, the micro perspective. So if I wanted to learn a word, would I just want to learn that word? No. Put it in a sentence if it's not already in a sentence or a phrase and learn the phrase or learn the sentence. A lot better way to learn because if you just learn the word, you're going to miss out on the fact that the word can be used in different contexts and have different meanings. So learning just the word doesn't really help you. Yeah, okay, before we go into number four, I was just a little bit curious about how it is where you guys live. Because when I was a child, very few people knew more languages. It was kind of like everybody knew, had their like one native language and very, very few people had more languages. Uh, maybe like two languages was the max that you ever heard about. But today it seems like a lot of kids just have many languages, three languages, even four languages you can read about. So how is it where you live? Is it normal to, you know, for children, youth, and or even adults to speak like three, four, five languages? I'm just curious. Um, so if you don't know, uh, my daughter, she's trilingual. She speaks Thai, English, and Norwegian. The next on the list, so like the meta hack number four, is review before every practice for at least 15 minutes. And the reason for this is that recent research show that we tend to learn, but also forget. So if you want to keep your knowledge, you should learn, but also not forget. So you keep the knowledge that you have. So one way to achieve this is to have a certain cycle of repetition. And, you know, science has shown that there is this certain uh, recipe for this. So if you repeat everything you learn for the child within 24 hours and then within the week, and then again within three months, and then within a year. Then you won't really forget it because you put it from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. And how can you do this with your child? There are several ways. Uh, for example, there's one application called Anki, where you can, it's like open source, so you can do anything with it. You can even have ChatGPT write flashcards for that application. So you could put everything that your child learned into it, and then when the flashcards appear, you kind of repeat it with your child. Or do it the natural way. A conversation is probably the best way to repeat anything, because in order to talk, we have to first comprehend, then formulate sentences, and then the person that we talk to have to comprehend, and then, so we kind of practice everything. And if you mix those two, it could be a great way to have a sort of systemized repetition for your child. Teaching others is a very good way for your child to learn a language. So this is hack number five. Because when you teach something, you have to know it more than just a little bit, more than just being familiar with that concept that you're teaching. So. There is a reason that the oldest sibling in a family will usually be smarter than the other kids, or not necessarily smarter, but at least like have more knowledge, maybe. That's a tendency. And it's because the sibling teaches every single one of her or his younger siblings, right? Next one is developing a learning routine. And how that routine is, isn't as important as having the routine. And this is something that you can help them with if they're not able to establish their own routine. You can help them to remind them that, okay, maybe now we do half an hour after school or when they wake up or in the weekend or whatever that routine is. And then once the routine is established, then it's easier to, you know, add on to it, maybe make it longer. But children are very 
happy to have a routine, uh, not only when it comes to languages, but when it comes to everything, like rules, they like rules and routine. And they can flourish under those conditions more easily than adults. The next one on the list, hack number seven, for meta-learning before you even start learning a language, is mapping out the child's primary learning sense. What does that mean? Well, we have auditory learners, we have visual learners, we have kinesthetic learners and so on. So that can play a role in how your child, you know, or how well your child le learns a language. But you have to understand that this concept that we as adults are used to is less pronounced in children. So it's not as important for children as it is for adults. So for children, it's kind of like more play. The more you can play, the better or the more language they can learn because playing is working like for children. Like adults like to work, children like to play. So it's their way of working kind of. So when they play, they not only learn languages, but they also develop their cognitive abilities in different ways, which again enhances language learning. Okay, so the next hack is like a very specific uh, technique that you can use or that you can help your child use to memorize words and phrases and stuff like that. So imagine that we have a Norwegian word we want to learn. If you, if, or if your child learns this technique, it may be that their ability to learn words is going to be a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier for them. Um, but some children already have or have established a way to do this without even knowing it. And that's an example can be my daughter. She just learns words very easily. And I think that has to do with the fact that she has already learned three languages and now she's learning the fourth. And learning the fourth, it's just everything comes free or easy to her. If that doesn't apply, or if your child is learning maybe their first foreign language, then this technique can be very helpful for them. So let's say that I'm gonna give you a specific example of how to do this, but it's basically about association like two different sounds and thus remember being able to remember the word. So for example, if we have the word il in Norwegian, it means fire. But how can we remember that? We have to find something that is similar in sound and then make a picture and then connect the dots. So il means fire. What sounds like il? Actually, nothing in American does, but the closest we get is eel. Or you could get closer if you think for a long time, maybe, but this is just an example, right? Eel. Okay, so I'm looking at an eel that is uh, above a fireside and has like fire on it. It's burning like crazy. So I'm now connecting eel, as in the snake-like uh, animal, to il, which is fire. Yeah, so did you get that last part about, I was trying to explain how to connect, how to associate different sounds in order to learn different words? If not, then write me a comment uh, in the section. I will try to uh, give a further explanation on it. Uh, but also, okay, so now we are almost at the finish line. This was tip or hack number nine, and we're gonna look at hack number 10 in just a minute. But before you do, can you uh, give a like to the video? That would be great, so that other people can share in our fun. Okay, so the last one is actually the one that has to do with the thumbnail today, because it says something like talent doesn't matter or something like that. I think it'll be. Okay, so why is that? Because when children learn a language, they should have a growth mindset. Uh, we shouldn't focus so much on their 
innate talent. And this is a mistake that I've done myself in the past. I used to say to Selena, my daughter, I used to say like, oh, you're so talented, you're so good, you're, you know, you're doing this, you're so great. But rather, you should focus on their ability to want to learn, to sit down and do the work. So now I started to say more things like, oh, I'm so proud of you because you put down the work to do this. And I can see that you learned it now. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, children, they're kind of like, look at the world in black and white. So either you're good or bad. You're, you're bad in a language or you're good in a language, but that's not... We have to teach them a little bit about nuance and show them that, yeah, you are really good at this language, but you're not perfect. You can always be better uh, in a nice way. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fine line there because you don't want to put them down, but you want to show them that we are never finished learning. It's like always learning, you know, for languages, you can even your, your native language. So think about English for you. Maybe that's your native language. Um, are you like, is there nothing for you to learn? I don't think so. There's a lot for you to learn. Try to read Shakespeare and see how much you understand of that text. This food was extremely spicy. You know that, right? In Thailand, they have really, really spicy food. But at least I'm now enjoying a meal. And if they didn't take all these preparations, I wouldn't be able to enjoy this meal, right? So it's the same with your child. You need to take all the preparations in order for them to enjoy their meal or their language learning. Oh, good. But very spicy.